welcome back to the second episode in a how to create your first VR chat world series. In this lesson, we'll learn how to build the geometry of our room. The first thing you want to check is to see that auto generate lighting is set to off in the bottom right corner. If it's not, click on this and then uncheck that box here. Now there's a few settings we need to change in Pro Builder before we start using it. Go to Edit, Preferences, Pro Builder, and then click on Show Action Notifications, Auto Resize Colliders, Static Editor Flags to Everything, and Mesh Collider to Box Collider. Now we can open up the Pro Builder window, go to Tools, Pro Builder, Pro Builder window, then you can dock it here if you like. There's a text mode here, but I'm going to switch it to icon mode for any people who may be watching where English isn't their first language. If you hover over any of these icons, there will be a pop-up. If you hold shift, it'll pop up immediately telling you what the tool is. Here on the left side of the scene view, we see the ProGrids window. You can press this button to toggle the grid and this button to switch which grid is shown. I'm going to do the Y since that's essentially a floor grid. This toggles Pro Builder snapping on and off. And then this is the snap value. I'm going to set it to 1 for 1 meter. You can increase it and decrease it by pressing plus and minus on the keyboard and then zero to reset it to the base that you set it as. The default should be one. Now we don't need this plan anymore and I want to create a floor for our room. So to do this, you will have to hold alt and then click the new shape tool here. And then the default should be cube, set it one, 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 hit build and then close this window. Now reset this to the origin and if you go up here you can see the handle position this is where the um, if you toggle this you'll see it'll toggle between center and pivot this is where the gizmo will appear and where you can edit the object from so whether I would want to rotate it around the pivot or say rotate it around the center the hotkey for this here is Z. To move this object, we want to actually first adjust our snap increment to 0.125 and then move this to negative 0 0.125 under the world origin. These are the Pro Builder selection modes. The default one the leftmost is object selection, lets us select different objects in the scene. And then we have vertex selection, edge selection, and face selection. These three components are what make up the geometry of all 3D models. The geometry is only one component of the models and it itself is referred to as the mesh. In each of these modes you can select that component of the geometry and manipulate it. By the way, Control Z undoes any action that you make. What we want to do is resize this cube so it is the width of a reasonable width of a floor. So drag this down. Let's edit this value here plus plus plus. Grab this space to so it extends out to five. So that's a total of. 6 length, 4 depth. Okay, and now we just need to make walls for our room. There's a shortcut for adding in a cube. It's just Control K. And now click in object selection mode, drag this to the corner here, and then resize it minus, minus, minus to adjust the grid size resize this so that it is aligned with our floor and then make it a height of 2.5 which is about the average height of an average room 
go into object selection mode and press Control D to duplicate our object, and then just drag it to make the other wall. Add in another cube and then make the last two walls. Duplicate our floor to make our ceiling. Okay, so now we have a box, but it doesn't look very much like a room. Perfectly rectangular floor spaces are honestly pretty boring. So let's make it not a rectangle. To do this, I need to teach you a technique that has been passed down through the generations. By learning this technique, you will be able to immensely advance your 3D modeling capabilities. Let me show you how it works. Go into edge selection mode. Select this edge of the floor here. And then the Pro Builder window, click on Insert Edge Loop. We press F to focus on the selection. You can see that this loop bisects the entire mesh. So we can drag this all the way over here. Now I need to teach you another technique. Complement this superb one that you just learned. Together with these two techniques, you will be able to create 3D models previously unthinkable. All right, go into face selection mode. Select this face right here on the side. While holding shift, click this blue arrow and drag it out. To a meter. We just extruded new faces from this one face, five to be exact. We just created a new non rectangular floor space. Now we need a wall to match. Do the same thing to the wall. Insert edge loop. Drag. Now, face selection mode. Click this face here. Oh, and if you need to select edge loops, double click on an edge. It'll select the entire loop that it belongs to. Drag that over there. And now, do the same thing. Shift, blue arrow. Strewed. Edge loop. Face. Strewed. Don't forget to hold shift. Without holding shift, drag this over. Now, bye bye goes this. Delete key. Control D. Drag this up. now have a non-rectangular room. It doesn't look very much like a room. There's something missing. There's no light being let in. We don't have a window. We need to make a window, and we can make a window by using edge loops. Edge, edge loop. New edge loop. Click on this edge here to create an edge loop this way. Click on it here again, create another edge loop this way, vertically. Now, when you select this face here, press F to focus on it, hold Alt to rotate around, Shift select this face here, and press Backspace, not Delete. Delete deletes the entire object. Control Z to undo. Press backspace to delete those two faces. Okay, we have a hole, but these two sets of edges are not connected. To connect these, just shift select these edges on the inside here, and then shift arrow extrude. Great, there's a problem. These edges 
are not actually connected. And that's because the vertices here are not connected. To fix this, press Control A to select all the vertices on the mesh, and then click Weld Vertices. This will merge any vertices that share the exact same position in space. Now we can create a cube for the window pane, resize it accordingly, and another cube for the borders of that pane. You can create some more windows here if you like. And you can also make objects child objects by dragging the object you want to be the child and then dragging it under the parent object. This way, however you translate the parent object, the child will follow. But the child can move independently from the parent. If you need a view to exactly modify something, you can click in this box right here at the top right corner, or you can click right under it where it says perspective. This will change to an orthographic camera where distance doesn't matter essentially. And you use this to get very accurate, precise measurements. If you click on this wall we edited, you can see this green box around it. This is the collider. This is what players and physics objects will collide with. Now we don't want a box in this case because we made it so that it's not rectangular anymore. So we can delete this by clicking on the three dots here and then clicking remove component. And in its place, we can type in mesh to add in a mesh collider. This way it takes the geometry of the mesh as the collision, but this is a very computationally expensive component in comparison to the box collider. So only use it when necessary. We can rename our objects in the hierarchy by right clicking and clicking rename. Or like in many other software in Windows, pressing the F2 key. Now we have the basic geometry of our room. The next lesson, we'll learn how to bring the surfaces to life with materials and textures.